So um, we are studying um, two major cell sources as a cell therapy in children um, with uh, autism or cerebral palsy or hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, which is uh, birth asphyxia uh, at the time of birth in otherwise healthy term baby. Um, and these three diseases are heterogeneous, probably not caused by the same um, mechanisms. And even within themselves can have multiple etiologies. Um, having said that, um, in cord blood, um, whether you use allogeneic or uh, uh, autologous, you really only have one dose of cells uh, that can be administered because there just aren't enough cells in a cord blood collection to split it up into multiple doses. Um, on the other hand, in cord tissue MSCs, we can make multiple doses, 500 to 1,000 or maybe more from a single umbilical cord. So um, the opportunity for you know, ongoing repeated dosing uh, is more available with the MSCs. Um, we, we also are concerned about access to therapy and um, want if these therapies are beneficial, all children in need to have access to the therapies. And so for that reason, we've explored both approaches in the diseases I mentioned. Um, and um, in the cord blood uh, approach, we're exploring both autologous or sibling or unrela unrelated donor publicly banked units. Um, in cord blood, we really think that active cell is the monocyte, so not a stem cell, so to speak, but the monocyte, which we've shown in multiple preclinical studies that are published that have the capability of stimulating remyelination in damaged brain. Uh, for the MSCs, it really appears that they work through modulation of inflammation uh, and through very complex mechanisms that involve interactions with macrophages in the lung and the spleen. Um, we do not think either of these cells engraft in the brain as part of their mechanisms of action. And I, again, I'll, I'll remind everyone that we're giving them intravenously without any pre-medication or cytoreduction or myelosuppression or immunosuppression. Um, so we're continuing to explore both cell sources. I think that it's more likely the court blood is going to be active in brain injury situations where demyelination or loss of brain uh, is the mechanism of action. And I think that um, the MSCs may turn out to be more active in situations where there's ongoing inflammation, which could be HIE or autism.